Example 17.9. In this example, a 3 millimeter diameter and 5 meter long electrical wire is tightly wrapped with a 2 millimeter thick plastic cover whose thermal conductivity is 0.15 watts per meter Kelvin. Electrical measurements indicate that the current is 10 amps, which passes through the wire, and the voltage drop is 8 volts along the wire. If the insulated wire is exposed to a medium at 30 Celsius with a heat transfer coefficient of 12 watts per meter square Kelvin, we need to determine the temperature at the interface of the wire and the plastic cover in a steady operation. And we also need to determine whether doubling the thickness of the plastic will increase or decrease this interface temperature. We're going to assume that the problem is going to be a steady state one dimension in the radial direction, constant properties, and we're going to neglect contact resistance. Okay, for this cylindrical system, we have two resistances. One, the conduction taking place inside of the plastic cover, and then the second one is the resistance due to convection outside when it's exposed to the medium. We have a heat loss going across this resistance, and we're going to start by calculating that heat loss that his loss is represented by the amount of electrical work going through the system, or electrical power going through the system, and that is equal to the voltage times the current. And that is equal to 8 volts times um, 10 amps. And that gives us 80 watts. That, so that's the amount of heat loss going, or the heat going across these resistances. So now let's calculate the resistances. So the resistance for the plastic is going to be a conduction between R2 and R1 and 2 pi K of the plastic L. And then if we substitute all these values we find that this resistance is equal to 0.18 Celsius over one. The second resistance is going to be a convection resistance and is going to be 1 over H A2. So the area that we have that is exposed to the medium, A2, is simply going to be the surface area which is 2 pi R2 times the length at that point. This area is equal to 0.11 meters square. And we substitute all these values, we find that the convection resistance is equal to 0.76 Celsius over watts. So now that we have both of the resistances, we could calculate the total resistance, the addition of both of them. So the total resistance becomes 0.94 Celsius over watts. Since we have the value of Q dot, we could find what is the change of the temperature by using this relationship. We know that Q dot is equal to the change in temperature divided by the resistance between the two points. So we're going to start with the temperature at T1, which is the interface. Uh, we want the interface between the wire and the plastic, so that is going to be T1. So we're going to say Q dot is equal to T1 minus T infinity, which is the value that we have over here and then we divide it by that total resistance. And then solving for T1, we find that the value of T1 becomes 105 Celsius. So that's the first part of the problem. The second part, we want to find out what will happen to the temperature if the thickness of the plastic cover is increased. Um, so what we need to find that is if we have an effect on the thickness to the temperature. That only will happen if the thickness of the insulation is below the critical thickness. So we have to start by finding the critical thickness and then we'll do the process. Okay, so let's just start with calculating the critical radius. So the critical radius is going to be a relationship between the thermal conductivity of the material and the heat transfer coefficient to which this material is exposed to. So if we take those two values, we find that the critical radius is equal to 12.5 millimeters. 
Now the critical thickness of the insulation is going to be the critical radius minus the radius of the wire in this case, which is R1. So what we're going to do is that is going to be equal to 10.5 millimeters. So notice that the thickness that we currently have is 2 millimeters. And if we double it, it's going to be 4, and that is still below the threshold. So that means that that is going to be an effect. Okay, so now we need to evaluate how it changes. So now if we evaluate it at T, critical thickness of 4, mil, uh, a new thickness of 4 millimeters, what changes is the value of A2. Okay, so once you evaluate a new value, so let's call it a new value, then you will do exactly the same process that we did before to find the value of T1. So that is going to give us a new temperature of 90.6 Celsius. So notice that significantly change of the temperature. So the critical thickness, so the, I'm sorry, the thickness went up and notice that the temperature went down. Okay, we could also go and find that what will happen to the temperature um, if the thickness that we have is the critical thickness. So if we do this process again, we find that T1 is going to be 83 Celsius. So that means that's the highest, that is the uh, threshold of the critical thickness that we're going to have. Therefore, that value of 80, 83 is going to be the threshold of the temperature. So it's not gonna drop anything below that, even if you increase the thickness above the value of the critical um, thickness that it was calculated.